us or not. Okay, I'm recording now. Great, thanks. Yeah, actually maybe what I'll do is uh, if I can, can I do that? I'll just go back to the first, first one. I see there's somebody else come in as well anyway. Okay, so what to wear paddling and the key is always safety. Uh, this is a picture of my friend Lynn Beyer who is uh, paddling on her way out to the end of the North Brooks Peninsula towards, uh, towards that island at the very end that uh, is a challenge for so many of us. Solander Island. Anyway, uh, you wanna be safe wherever you are, whether you're up on the North Brooks or not. Warmth and comfort are important, but staying safe on the water is really what we're trying to do. And good clothing though, uh, you know, being comfortable helps you paddle safely. So paddle more safely. So that's, that's what we're on about here tonight. And remember the ocean is always cold. David said this earlier, uh, Victoria's average right off the shores here from seven to 11 degrees centigrade, never really warms up. And Juan de Fuca is uh, colder than the other waters, but it flushes more frequently. So very cold out there. Now uh, a wetsuit, some think, is all you need. And in many ways, uh, they're quite right. A wetsuit does a great deal. When you're immersed in a wetsuit, your body heats the water in the neoprene layer. That's how it works. And it creates an insulating barrier there for you. Uh, so there are different kinds of uh, neoprene suits, wetsuits, full body, you often see this with uh, kite boarders, uh, you know, those folks who are out there uh, getting up and down a lot. The Farmer John or Farmer Jane is more common with, with kayakers. It, it leaves your, um, you know, your arms very free to paddle. And you can also get top and bottom separates. They're relatively inexpensive wetsuits. And uh, was pointed out, just John A pointed this out. It's easier if you have to swim, much easier to do that in a wetsuit. It actually provides some buoyancy and also some protection from scrapes. It is important to have a snug fit to your wetsuit. Uh, so it's tight to your skin, uh, which is gonna heat the water and so forth. And two to three, two to three millimeters is the standard uh, for kayaking around here. It would be more if you were boarding or, or kite surfing and so on. There is a compressed neoprene product, which uh, Reed Chill Cheater uh, markets, which is called Aquatherm, so thinner. Uh, may be worth looking at. And there's a water shedding inside layer that uh, NRS has come out with. They call it their Ultra. And so they have an Ultra John or an Ultra Jane uh, as well. So what are the pros and cons? I think we've sort of covered a bit of this, so I'm not going to take too long here. Uh, the wetsuit is relatively inexpensive. It's flexible. It's durable. If you get a hole in your wetsuit, who really cares? Uh, you know, it's, it's not going to be a major problem. Water's not going to rush in. It, some people find it cooler for summer paddling and that would be with a light shirt probably on top because they can still keep you warm, of course. Uh, big con, of course, is wet, you know, uh, but there you go. That's the kind of thing you're into. And peeling it off after a paddle, uh, it can be tricky. It doesn't, uh, doesn't easily come off. In very cold water below seven degrees, uh, you know, it, it, you'll, you'll be cold. You can feel the cold. You'll have to You'll have to spend a very limited time in that water. They dry very slowly when you rinse it afterwards and try and dry it out. It takes a long time. And then there's the whole issue of relief access. We'll come back to this, <laughs> but uh, men and women have different uh, position zippers and uh, some, and so the relief access is, is an issue with this one. The, the female tends to go right underneath the male just down to the bottom. Uh, this is my Ultra John. Uh, I didn't see another picture come in and I'm just showing on the picture on the right, the uh, fabric that's inside. And uh, NRS has this in a number of their garments made with neoprene. So it's something to, it, it, it uh, dries very quickly, sheds water actually, and uh, you can, uh, uh, it's comfortable. So it's, it's nice to have that a little different insulation. It's, uh, it's not neoprene, it's something else. Uh, and here's a, here's a, a picture Alan. of the Aquatherm uh, wetsuit. So it's the compressed neoprene. You can see it's very tight um, and it's quite thin and it's quite warm. This is a full suit, as you can see a top and a bottom, but it's got long sleeves. So I found it quite warm when I was paddling in it in the warmer weather anyway. Cold weather wetsuits. Dorothea, did you have a question? 
Yeah, I'm just writing it. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay. There we go. Uh, the cold weather wet I forgot to mention, Ellen, that they're very slimming. <laughs> there you go. You're very slimming. This is Luke uh, last week, I think, and his, uh, he's got a wetsuit on under all that, and he's got a splash jacket on top. Uh, you can just see the, uh, the sort of um, above his boots, the brand name of uh, Aquatherm, Reed Aquatherm High Socks. So they also make socks out of this compressed neoprene. And he has on some uh, waterproof work gloves, and we'll get back to these other elements in a minute, but he's got the wetsuit on there. I uh, just wanted to cover the fact that you, you might well wear a wetsuit in warmer weather. And so here's uh, uh, Debbie with her neoprene shorty Farmer Jane on, and she's got fingerless gloves and some Gore-Tex sleeves. We call them Patty sleeves because Patty Stevens was the one who got uh, Paolo to make them first, I think. Uh, they're a Gore-Tex uh, thing that he makes and short boots. So, you know, you might wear a wetsuit in, in warm weather, in, even in uh, really hot weather. Here's, here's uh, Debbie again, and she's got a two-piece neoprene suit on here with the sun hat, some light gloves, and the short boots. So the wetsuit is, is flexible. It's, uh, you know, it's got different kinds of elements. Uh, Debbie and some, a couple of her other friends, uh, they're boarding in this. So you can see these are much more serious uh, wetsuits, and they've got uh, neoprene hoods on in the full the full body covering to go into that cold water boarding. So that's uh, kind of the wetsuit. Uh, we're we're going to come back to this, and and if you've got some questions and you aren't, uh, you know, we can we can certainly spend some time. I want to get through kind of uh, uh, if you like uh, an overview of the different options, and then we'll take a look at how it might all come together. So we've talked about the wetsuit, and now a dry suit. I mean, it sounds wonderful, right? You're on the water in the water maybe, and you're dry? What's not to like about that? Well, uh, the fit is important, and so you need to leave room for insulating layers beneath because a dry suit is not a warm suit. It's just, ideally, it's dry, keeping you dry, but you need layers beneath it to keep you warmer if, if it's cold. Uh, Cocotat, I'm told, will do custom fitting so you can order to your measurements. Uh, I don't know of another firm that does that, but Cocotat does. Uh, a dry suit is thought to be, by some at least, to be cooler in warm weather. You just wear less underneath, obviously, and uh, so then it's, it's a cooler suit, perhaps. Um, getting it on and off without assistance. So now this, this is something to consider. Uh, most dry suits have a front diagonal zipper. You'll see images of this and some video. Uh, but uh, those that don't, uh, it might take a little getting used to. You've got um, the back zip, and in particular, the high back zip is, uh, or the mid back zip is, is tricky. Um, gaskets. So the gaskets that you have uh, are um, probably made of latex if it's water tight. There are two different grades, a lighter and a thicker one, or possibly neoprene, in which case, if it's neoprene, it's not water tight, but it's, it's semi-dry. It's, it's going to keep most water out unless you're, you're upside down for a while. Again, relief zippers in a dry suit, important. Uh, and you'll see some images of that for men and women. Uh, however, the suit may not always be dry. There can be pinholes, teeny weeny holes you couldn't probably see with the naked eye and perhaps more than that. So you'll wanna check warranties with any company you're dealing with and, and repair services locally or with the company. They are reasonably durable, but they do wear out. And so it's important to take care and we come back to that and there are a number of suppliers in the US, Canada, and the UK, and I don't suggest China. And not to go into detail, but uh, uh, slightly bad experience there, but there you go. So a number of suppliers uh, that you can uh, look for dry suits from. So just kind of summarizing that, the pros, if they're zipped up and there are no holes, they're dry, warmer for winter cold weather paddling with base layers, there are a number of options, pockets, hoods, tunnels that uh, accommodate your spray skirt and give you more protection uh, from water coming in. Uh, High-tech fabrics we've mentioned, they do dry out after use fairly quickly if you just turn them inside out, hang them up somewhere. Uh, the relief zippers again are available for men and women. Uh, check the warranty in advance. The, the cons, well, I guess the big one we're aware of, these are expensive and uh, anywhere from 800 up to $1,600, not uncommon uh, for a new suit. Might be worth looking to see if there's a used, uh, used one in good condition. 
but uh, a new suit will set you back quite a bit. And uh, getting in and out, I mentioned, may require uh, flexibility or possibly assistance. Uh, Gaskets do wear out and need replacement, and that can be done. It's something you could do yourself, and, and the club can help you with that. We have some kits, and we have some, some training and people who know how to do that. Uh, standard sizes, you know, small, medium, large, don't necessarily fit everyone. You may be large in some areas, small in others, and so that's something to consider. Uh, we were talking about worm layers um, when we spoke the other day, some of us, and uh, this is from John Abercrombie, who's on the line. And there are a few images of this. Uh, he is a, a proponent of the kind of one piece uh, underlay. You can get it at various weights. This is uh, the left is from Reed Chilcheater and the right, Heli Hansen. Uh, Cocotat makes them for men and women. As you see, these are a couple of uh, examples here. And uh, Level 6, which is a Canadian supplier out of Ottawa, make them for men and women. And th this has a drop seat. So you can, uh, you can get in and out of it if you like, once you, once you get down to that layer um, to uh, relieve yourself. So warm base layers are important. A few images. So this is Lynn, uh, Lynn Byer with uh, her dry suit. And she has, as you can see, sort of a neoprene neck collar. Uh, this is uh, Debbie giving us a, a good view of her uh, zipper for uh, female relief zipper, which goes all the way around the back. Uh, just at the hips and uh, so good uh, access there for relief. And a friend of Debbie's here uh, getting into her mid-zip style. Uh, these are Kokotat suits you've seen so far, by the way. This is a Kokotat two-piece. And uh, the closure at the midpoint, obviously critical. So some of us know uh, folks who have not had it fully clothed, closed and ended up in the water and uh, you get wet in a heartbeat. Uh, if you have any kind of opening in your zipper. Uh, this is a, a, Debbie's holding some dry pants, dry, so-called dry pants are actually semi-dry because water would get in above them, obviously, and a splash top there. So this is semi-dry apparel, maybe for warmer weather where you're not planning to go uh, be immersed. Um, good for splashes, but not for immersion. So that's the top and dry, dry suit uh, elements. And then some options to consider. Uh, well, ensure there's enough room for insulating layers. Um, entry uh, zipper style is uh, the, the front diagonal is the easiest and they'll have a little uh, video showing that one. Um, the relief zipper style, again, we've mentioned neoprene um, versus latex suit gaskets. So neoprene is not really fully dry, obviously latex, yes. And people don't like the latex it's kind of very tight against your skin, but it's keeping you dry and doing that. So uh, storm hoods are, are provided with uh, some dry suits. And these are, uh, these are good. Obviously, if you need them, you can flip them up. But it's nice also to be able to detach them if you don't need them. A cinch to pull the waist in is useful. Um, a tunnel for spray skirt, if, you, if that's your, your wish to have such. You don't really need it, but that's another option. Uh, wrist and ankle closures, usually these are Velcro closures, tightening around the ankle, which can be a bit loose sometimes and getting your boots on and off. And pockets are always, uh, always important, of course. So uh, I have a, uh, an old uh, Kokotat Expedition dry suit. Uh, whoops, I missed that one. Where am I? And it has a front diagonal zipper. Uh, where is it? I'm just going to stop the share for a minute and come back here. Okay, Alan, I'm going to throw out some comments that people have been putting on chat. Yeah, please. Um, Dorothea comments that wetsuits help you with floating, which is certainly true. Um, Edmund uh, comments that wetsuits are also repairable. Um, Karen says that uh, there's a Stolquist uh, shift has a zipper that, that's around the neck and it's very easy to get on and off by yourself. Oh yeah. Um, Sean says, there's a great YouTube video from level six about a knockoff Chinese dry suit and that it's not very good quality. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Edmund points out that dry suits come in a, a number of colors. Um, and then there was some discussion about gaskets and the cost of uh, having to buy gaskets. David thinking that they're very expensive if you have to get a full set of gaskets, but 
it was pointed out that you can get them from the UK um, at a better price. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure what uh, happened with my. Okay, I can't do that. Are you looking for yourself, Alan? I'm looking for my video that's supposed to be right in there, but uh, I think I can find it in a different place. If I open this up again and go back to sharing. Yeah, so I'll just share it this way with you. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. This is me with a front diagonal. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing that and see if I can come back and share the presentation again, uh, which is here, here I guess. And if I- While, he, while the, uh, Alan's doing that, I'll throw out a comment, um, which is that you can save the chat if you're interested. If you find that there's things in there and references you wanna look at later, in the very bottom corner of the chat, there's three dots. If you click on that at the end and Alan, don't sign off, let people have a minute to do that. Sure. Then you can save the chat as a Word file and come back to any of the, especially if people put uh, URLs in it, you can access them. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, the other thing I'll just mention is before the meeting started, I, I did a little chat and I attached um, a few documents, which uh, one's for wetsuits, one dry suits, and one's tulips. And they have links in them that should be active, uh, both for the companies and for particular items. So if you've not looked around before, I've tried to make it a little easier by identifying what those companies are and uh, how, to, uh, how to get to them. So I'm just gonna see if I can advance this. There we go. So uh, Jenny's uh, tip is uh, here to preserve your dry suit. I'm not very good myself. She's very good. If you carry a pad with you in your kayak, uh, just always leave it in your kayak somewhere, then you can protect your suit while you're seated because obviously if you sit on something prickly, you might poke a little pinhole without even knowing it in your suit and take care around bushes and, and the like to avoid getting uh, pinholes. Good ideas. Uh, now a tulip. So these are not thought of too much, but for you Greenland paddlers, and we have more and more of them, I know, uh, tulip is uh, really the Greenland item. I don't know if Mike's still on the line, but we probably have some Greenland paddlers on. I think I saw Tim Frick. Uh, so a tulip is, um, is a one piece. It's got a splash, in effect, a jacket or a top and a spray skirt, and it's tight to the cockpit combing. So um, it really does it all for you. And this is uh, Tony Playfair's uh, tulip. And headgear. Headgear is terribly important if you lose a lot of heat through your head. So there's toques, there's neoprene hoods we've seen, peak caps, very common, of course, helmets when you need them, uh, neck gaiters, you know, the tubes that can keep you warm, sun hats for the sun or rain hats for rain. 
And uh, Barry Copeland, who I think is on, he sent me some pictures of his cold weather paddling gear. So this is about his head. He's got a helmet on there, you see, and I think he's got a, at the top of the ones on the right there, the little um, kind of fleece lined cap that can fit under it, keeping his ears warm. And below that is uh, kind of a full neoprene hood. So that's a good way to keep your, your head warm. And particularly if you're going in and out of the water, you're doing uh, re-entry practice or something, rolling practice, then really important you don't get the ice cream headache as much. Here's Debbie with a toque and her pogies there. You can see attached to her Greenland paddle on a cool day. And Jenny's got her hats organized here. So she's got a black one with warm lining. Uh, that's the one on the top left for rainy winter days. White has UV protection, sunny days. And the wide brims in both cases, uh, you know, block the sun and reduce the glare. And then the bottom, a wool cap that it can cover your ears. So a bit like uh, what Barry had there uh, for cold days. Though hats uh, is important and, and heads. And then keeping your hands warm. Well, of course, gloves, many types of gloves, pogies we've mentioned, and hand warmers. Here's a few types of uh, gloves that uh, Debbie suggested, and also that you have a second pair. So you have dry ones after lunch, that came up again. Uh, warm fleece gloves to wear on shore. And if you put your wet gloves between your PFD and your chest when you're eating or when you're off the water, then they get a little bit uh, warmer. They're still wet, of course, but they might be a bit warmer for you. Um, here's Barry's cold weather paddling gear. On the left, you see uh, some pretty heavy duty work gloves that have a nice lining to them. And of course, that'll keep the water out unless it goes above that wrist uh, thing. So an even higher wrist and a tighter wrist would be better, but that's going to keep you from getting too wet. And these are uh, shorter pogies on the right. Uh, I don't know if you've come across these. Uh, the, the left is the toe warmers, so-called, and the right hand warmers. They really work the same. Little, little packs of chemicals that if you uh, agitate them, they give a gentle heat up to, they say here, eight hours. Um, they're different, um, you know, makes, and you get them at outdoor stores of all kinds. Um, not expensive, and it really does provide a little bit of heat. You can put them uh, uh, where you need them, and I think I show a picture of, uh, of that next. So keeping your feet warm, you've got uh, obviously boots, socks, and then those little toe and hand warmers. So here is, oh good, I've got one now. This is uh, Elizabeth showing her tripping footwear. She's got several different kinds. I'm here to say a couple things about footwear. So I have slipped and fallen on one of those slippery rocks carrying kayaks a couple of times too often, which can result in sprained ankles and even worse, a hole in your wine bag. So <laughs> I pay careful attention to what I put on my feet. There's probably more injuries actually that happen on shore than when you're in the water. So this is my number one choice of footwear. These are 510 water tennies and they're a canyoneering shoe. They're designed for people walking around in canyons. Um, it's a big sport somewhere. Um, they've got a very good rubber on the bottom that really sticks to those rocks. And the, it's got some ankle support and um, the, you don't get rocks down your, your boots very easily. So it protects the foot of your dry suit but they just have amazing support. So that's what I prefer to wear when I'm kayaking. But they're not insulated. So in the winter time, we like these NRS booties. They come up just above the ankle, got a good zipper. They fit fairly snugly around the foot here. So they do provide a bit of support. They've got a fairly thick sole. So it's pretty good for traction on the rocks, but they really do keep your feet warm. They have this nice lining inside, the um, fleecy thing that really does keep your foot warm. It's got a fairly wide toe box too, which helps. And I limit my footwear on a trip to two pairs of shoes, including what I wear, um, including what I wear in the kayak. Uh, so these water tennies actually make really good hiking. Huh? We got frozen there? Yep. Uh oh. The shoes when you're on shore. Back again. They dry quickly and just with another wool sock underneath, you can feel a bit damp. Makes an excellent hiking shoe. Um, 
on the West Coast and during wetter weather, we really like wearing uh, these particular um, extra tough gum boots. They last so much better than some of the less expensive brands that we've had. The sole is really thick and sticky and they fit nicely on your foot. They're not sloppy. And in the summertime, if it's a bit warmer, you can roll them down so you don't get too hot. That's our choice for wet weather camping and West Coast Vancouver Island camping. And when you're camping in nice warmer weather, we like these. They look like Crocs, but they aren't. They're called Ufos. We bought them at a store in, Cam in Port McNeil when we were on a kayak trip. They stick. They fit your foot so much better. Crocs are quite sloppy and it's really easy to twist your ankle in them, whereas these have better support. They stick onto your foot better and they're not plasticky. They've got a really good sole, which also sticks well on the rocks. That's my opinions on footwear. There you go. And then uh, Debbie uh, made uh, a little display of her socks here. So you can see starting at the top, uh, purple merino, the chill cheater socks reads um, aquatherm socks there, the long ones, and then some blue heat holders they're called and the neoprene socks um, at about uh, nine o'clock over there. So those are her sock choices. Oh, I, I think I was going to take this one out, but that's just a little reminder that you can put these things in. And I think now, right. So this is where I put the uh, toe warmers. You can just uh, take them out of the toe warming package. There's two uh, in each one and they have a little adhesive side and you can just stick them right on the top of your toes there and, and you put your dry suit over top and away you go or, or wetsuit, whatever. Uh, just going to give you some heat until they, uh, they stop. Now at lunchtime. So uh, lunchtime or when you stop paddling, if you're paddling, usually you're warm enough because you're working. But I find as soon as I stop, I get cold right away. So we were over on uh, Discovery last week, a uh, few of us, and we thought we'd see what we were all wearing at lunch. It was kind of cold when we stopped. All right, we're looking at kegs. This is Luke with his, with his double weight keg, the heavy duty one from Reed. And we have Debbie and she's got the, showing off the Coca Tat With the storm nice keg. warm place for your hands. Warm place for the hands, but nice. But there's a little slot where you can still reach in. Okay. And get your radio. Okay, very good. And John this has- This is not a keg, but this is a, an extra large rain jacket from uh, Salvation Army. Okay. Four ninety nine, and, and it's working well. It's just keeping him warm here at lunch. We're stopped on Rutland, and then you remember the great, the great one over here. He's got the the tulip going. It, it's the it's the everything, you know. Yeah, Tony's always styling in his tunic. Tulip. <laughs> Tony does the twirl there. All right, we're very nice. This is just a little bit of a close up to you can see the storm keg, heavy duty storm keg that Luke has. Um, from Reed, and I think I, yeah, we go on. This is Jenny's tips, uh, staying warm at lunch. Again, changing the fleece gloves, dry paddling gloves, good idea. Uh, this is an interesting one. Some people pour hot water from a spare thermos, bring another thermos just with hot water, and then they pour that hot water into their wet gloves, uh, and hey presto, you've got warm wet gloves and uh, nicer to get into after lunch. So another option for you to uh, warm up at lunch. So we wanted to kind of go through the elements like that and then uh, take a look at how it kind of comes together. Putting this all together, what do people who have done quite a bit of paddling and paddle all year round, as many of us do here, what do they wear? Uh, we thought we'd take a look and uh, I don't know if he's still on the line, but this is David uh, Maxwell. Okay, fingerless gloves, wet water pogies, come in and out and get your hands out quickly a north water vest that allows you to have a tow belt on it. Place for your radio. Goes over top of your PFD. Cheaper than buying a new PFD that has a tow belt attachment on it. My PFD, pretty straightforward. No pockets, kind of crappy, but you know, I own it already. My Tilly hat, 
floats, keeps your head warm. My spray skirt. This is a hoop spray skirt. It's supposed to keep the water off you. It's got a little compartment in the front where you can put stuff. Paddling jacket. A must. On winter days like this is January day. Now, underneath my paddling jacket, if I can get it off. Is a fleece vest just to keep me a little warmer in these cold days. But because I paddle in a wetsuit, I like to wear extra layer. So this is a two millimeter long sleeve shirt that goes under my wetsuit to keep me nice and warm. And these are my underwear. <laughs> Yeah, down to my boots. Okay, tall boots, a pair of socks inside, and a pair of uh, an old pair of running shoes. The liner in the bottom, so keep your feet warm inside the boat. That's it. Happy time. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's David. Uh, he he uh, gave you quite the tour there through the again a wetsuit approach to winter paddling. So now we have, uh, these were friends who, these guys, by the way, have been paddling over to Chatham Discovery every week since the pandemic began. So uh, all the more power to them. And so their, their knowledge about what works for them on the water is uh, from lots of experience just offshore here. This is Alex Breiker, and he's got a different story. Hi, my name is Alex Breiker. I have caught a bad, really nice, and warm with warm padding inside. Uh, my glasses that I really need to see who is behind me, who is in front. My dry suit <laughs> and my booties. That's about it. Underneath, I have just uh, uh, underwear and. Uh, one uh, one shirt, that's about it. Okay. If I'm cold, I have to paddle faster this hole. Okay. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> so people who know Alex uh, will tell you that he rarely has to look uh, ahead of him because he's a fast paddler and maybe because he's trying to stay warm. Uh, this is John Abercrombie's paddle wear, so it's what John has John to say. Abercrombie. Uh, in the wintertime, I use pogies on my paddle, and I, all year round, I wear gloves. Uh, so that's my hand combination. On my head, I've got a Gore-Tex hat with pleats lining, and it's got ear flaps that can be folded up if I need to do temperature control. Um, this morning, it was about three degrees Celsius when we started. It's about eight or 10 now, probably. Um, I always wear a neoprene tunnel, pretty well always wear a neoprene tunnel uh, spray skirt, and that's an extra layer of insulation under my PFD. And under that, I've got a dry suit, um, level six dry suit, and I've cut a few bits off. Um, and under that, I've got a full layer of fleece, and then a base layer, uh, underwear layer, and wool socks, and, uh, and paddling boots. That's some neoprene insulation. Thanks, John. Okay. John so uh, John uh, is a fan of the one piece. We, we showed you that before, and that's what he wears when he's paddling in the winter here. And obviously that would keep you a lot warmer uh, than uh, without that, that uh, kind of layer underneath. And this was the fellow who was taking the videos before. This is the, uh, the last member of this group of four here is, uh, is John Minkley. So John's story. <laughs> Hello, I'm John Minkley. My head. I wear a wide uh, full cap. Gives you the nice early Russian Cosmonaut look. Drive open up the PFD. I like these. Lots of pockets. Radio in one. Got some uh, screens in that pocket. Got a tow belt attached. Some uh, sunscreen in this pocket. I can carry up the pins. Here. Uh, my space skirt. And then I 
I have a Kiko Gat dry suit. Lots of pockets in this. I like those. I have a hood. Very nice to have a hood. hood. On my uh, paddling hands, I use the short bookies that uh, John was describing. I've got arthritis in my thumb, so I wear these uh, wrist braces on my hands, and I wear these narrow, tight neoprene gloves. Feeling good on my seat. I like the rest. I've got sandals. These are keen sandals. I really like them because they've got a very thick sole. And just over my seat of my dry suit, I have a, um, a uh, neoprene sock. That's it. Thanks for Bye bye. Thank you, John. So that's uh, John talking about the neoprene sock that's over the dry suit foot. He's, con he's uh, sort of sheltering his uh, dry suit foot or, or keeping it from encountering anything by having a, a larger size neoprene sock over it. Interesting idea uh, that John uses. And this is Lynn. Hi, I'm Lynn. I'm from top to bottom. Here's my winter kit. Um, I have been using a neck tube out of fleece to keep my ears warm over top of my ball cap. Uh, the neck tube also doubled as a quick face mask that we all need these days. Uh, I prefer a dry suit. I like the convenience of stepping out and still be wearing uh, street clothes. Uh, I have the gender non-specific suit that has a P-zip, which requires one of these little gizmos uh, to pee with if you are a woman. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's 100% effective. Um, gloves. I have a tendency to have very cold hands. So this is what's working for me right now would be rubber gloves that come up quite high to keep the water out. And underneath that, I have simple dollar store fleece gloves. If that's not enough, I have neoprene pogies which go over my paddle and I've never not been able to keep my hands warm that way. In summer, I have a pair of nylon pogies. Okay, now I'm gonna wrestle out of this thing. Uh, I love my dry suit when I'm wearing it. I do not love putting it on and taking it off. Anyhow, there we are. Uh, underneath, on my upper layer, I have a neoprene uh, mid-weight wool, merino wool shirt. I put the Cisco nylon top over top because the merino has a tendency to get holes in it. Um, underneath, I have my mid-weight merino wool long johns and that keeps me nice and toasty. Now I have a couple of who knows where pinhole leaks in my dry suit. So I have a tendency to get wet feet. So what I've done is I have put um, uh, waterproof socks over top of another pair of merino wool socks, which makes my foot thing quite bulky. So I go with simple Crocs. They're cheap, they're quite insulating actually, and the water runs out of them. Um, I prefer the ball cap for keeping the sun off, but if it's going to rain, I have this fleece-lined Gore-Tex hat, which I love. It's been with me for 15 years. If I'm cold on the beach, uh, I can throw a poncho over top of everything and that will help block the wind and keep me a little drier and warmer. Um, in the summer, I will overheat and so I go with the neoprene uh, Farmer Jane 
with its handy dandy little P zip at the bottom. Um, all that being said, I have a new Gore-Tex suit on order and I've gone with the women's specific one. I'm just finding the P zip on the unisex a little too awkward. I've had some close calls. Uh, so yeah, that's me. That's my kit. That's great. That's uh, that's a great one with uh, all of the things that Lynn uses to keep her warm. And uh, Jenny provided this, I think, recent picture that I believe Elizabeth took uh, an occurrence clinic out at 10 Mile. And just uh, I've listed here uh, the things that she wears under her uh, dry suit there. You see fleece pants and so forth, fleece vest, and then thick wool socks inside her dry suit feet and knee high boots. And then the pogies, fingerless gloves for dexterity, dry gloves afterwards. And if she is going in the water, planning to do, you know, helping with uh, people or, or rolling or whatever, then she adds another layer of uh, thin wool, long johns, long janes. That's Jenny's winter kit. And I just wanted to say thank you to all those who were brave enough to step in front of the camera and to uh, send me their pictures. That was wonderful. I appreciate it very much. So that's the end of that presentation. I'll stop the share and we'll come back and uh, invite your questions or address the questions, so. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through the ones that have been coming into the chat, Alan. Uh, let's see, where do I need to start? Um, yep. With Claire. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Claire and Elaine say, um, if you combine semi-dry pants and a paddling jacket, both with neoprene at the waist, will it come close to being approximately a dry suit? And Jenny says that do that does not work for her. Um, Sean Finnegan says, dry suits can float you too much if you don't burp them. Uh, I guess you also won't fit in your cockpit if you don't burp it very well. Um, burping, Sharon, by the way, is uh, is letting the air out, right? Uh, you open the, the neck and crouch down and let the air out. That's called burping it. Yeah. Uh, Sharon says, Peak UK makes a good dry suit with neoprene neck gasket. I could not wear a latex gasket. Um, Helen says, this is great. I managed to get a used only once dry suit off Facebook marketplace, but didn't know how to use it properly. How do you, what do you recommend for footwear over my dry suit socks? Uh -huh. uh, well, we saw a few options in there, right? We had, um, I think uh, John uh, Minkley, as far as I know, the only one who's put a, a neoprene sock over his dry suit sock to protect it. Uh, but you can also just put it in a boot and, uh, and protect it that way. Um, maybe some other ideas as well. Uh, I've just lost my place here, sorry. Uh... <laughs> I've got a lot of comments here. I see oh, okay. that. Good. Uh, PQK is not P friendly, says Sharon. Uh, Karen says, I wear neoprene, neoprene booties. Um, uh, <laughs> Edmund says, you shouldn't be peeing in either kind of a suit. <laughs> um, Jenny says, Alan, I put one arm into my dry suit without that flipping up action. Then the second arm goes into the suit before pulling overhead. She thinks that that, that takes less effort. Uh, Edgar says, Blue Dog is now a Kokatat dealer and we'll order dry suits for you. Delivery is about six weeks and you can get different color combinations. Uh, Jenny says to remember a hat that has a chin strap, very important in our winds. Um, Kirsten and Bob say, where's a good place to get those hats? Edmonds says he sees them in secondhand stores. Um, Jenny says, I saw these insulated waterproof gloves, top floor at TroTac, about $30. Uh, most outdoor stores for hats, Robinson's, MEC, et cetera, offers Karen. Um, Edmund said, Capital Iron carries neoprene gloves in several styles. Jan says, also Chota's knee-high all neoprene boots are her favorite. Um, 
Edmund says, hot water also thaws out frozen wetsuits. <laughs> Sean comments that uh, at eight degrees in the sun with the dry suit on, he'd be melting. Uh, one can always go for a cooling dip. Uh, Elizabeth says, for the ladies, the hard devices like that um, are the only ones to use with the dry suit. So they come in soft, plastic, soft rubber or plastic and hard, and she's suggesting go with the hard one and practice at home. Uh, uh, the ladies version from Kokatat has a lowered front zip compared to the men's unisex sex one. Sean's always overheating. Uh, his light layer under his dry suit was dripping wet from sweat when it was only five to six degrees outside. But he'd like to hear other safe options for those who need less warmth rather than more, including spring, fall rather than winter. Uh, Lorelai says, recommendations where to find tall boots, neoprene or otherwise would be appreciated. I find the lower boots don't allow for socks underneath and flood. And Mark's wondering, what's your opinion on using an inflatable PFP? So, sorry, I'm just running through these, but do people want to throw out answers or maybe throw com comments on the chat if you have answers for any of these? I can just mention that, uh, you know, for knee-high boots, you can find those, I think, on Mech Online, but I'm not sure. NRS makes them. Uh, they're, you know, and they are a better, uh, I would say, a better quality boot than the stock one that Mech has made for them. I've, I've worn out the latter and I still have the former. So um, I would think that you, this time of year, uh, you might have to go online to find them. We don't have a, a full kayaking store really anymore in Victoria. So um, it's, uh, it's a question of whether or not you can find them uh, at a reasonable price. Um, online. I'll, it's, uh, I'll just mention the NRS uh, uh, knee-high boots I got through Valhalla Nanaimo. They, they have quite an extensive kayak store. They sell kayaks and lots of gear through Valhalla and Nanaimo. Ah, okay. Better than Valhalla Victoria, I'd say. Yeah, but they're more into clothes. No, the Nanaimo franchise has really stepped up and filled a lot of the gap that Ocean River left. Very good. Very good. Yeah, they won't have those boots until March now, they told me. Ah. Well, that's size 11 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Karen offers to Sean that, that her husband goes with a former John year round with different thickness of neoprene or paddling shirts and a dry top. So that's how he manages not overheating. Uh, let's see, Elizabeth says, neoprene socks are a good idea if you're going to wear something like Crocs or sandals to protect the dry suit foot. Um, Karen says, I'm interested in discussion on what do you do on an expedition if you blow a gasket? Happened to me on a 10 day paddle on day five, was able to field repair for the remaining few days, but I'd be worried if going for longer. So what do the expedition people say about that? Yeah, when I've gone on long expeditions, I take full repair kits so I can repair a neck gasket or uh, wrist gaskets. Um, it's, it's a little messier out there. You don't necessarily have everything, but that's one of the things you try and make sure you bring is a form of some kind that will allow you to, you know, sort of uh, do the repair properly. Uh, so I do carry that. Uh, and I did have to replace, I have had to replace both wrist and neck gaskets on long trips. But ideally, you want to make sure they're in good shape. Unfortunately, when a gasket starts to be really easy to get into, it's probably just about done. So if it's awkward for you to get into, it's probably in good shape. And that's just something you should check before your expedition, I, I suggest. And maybe make the repair at home, it's much easier. Okay, thanks, Alan. Um, we have a question. If my semi-dry suit pants fill with water, will they weigh me down? I would say definitely yes. Um, definitely yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rhonda says, I believe NRS has the boots, but heard me uh, Mech isn't carrying them any longer. Okay, so we just dealt with that with Valhalla. Um, Mark says, I found that I need one size up if using NRS paddle boots. I thought a size 11 would do, but sent them back for size 12. Much better because I can also, I also use a waterproof sock over top of my dry suit socks. Yeah, good idea. Uh, Sean says Valhalla Victoria is supposed to be getting kayak gear, but not until March. Um, 
Edmund says, dry suits can be rented in Cowichan Bay from Cow Bay Kayak for $25 a day. Oh, that's a good idea if you're not sure whether or not you want to buy a dry suit. Um, Elizabeth's wondering why people want knee-high boots. Uh, I like them because they keep my feet drier than ankle boots do. Yeah. yeah once uh, you go over the knee-high, you're done, but uh, you've got a little bit of play there. Yeah. Uh, Karen says, thanks to Alan for doing this. Uh, Jing suggests to Sean to try Under Armour Cold Gear Base 2.0. It might work well for winter paddling when you wear a dry suit. Uh, oh, and Edmund offers that balloons make a good mobile form that is quick and easy to use in the field. I, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, knee highs mean you have dry feet and are super warm. Uh, Heather says, I want over the knee boots. Nobody, <laughs> over the knee boots. Okay, nobody makes them. I wear a wetsuit. Don't want water going in over the top of the boots. Um, and Doug says, thanks for all the helpful advice. Well, there you go. I was just going to say, too, in terms of places to look for stuff, um, Western Canoe and Kayaking in Abbotsford is a fairly large store. There are some other suppliers in Vancouver. And you can get things from them online and have it sent over. If you can't find something locally, I mean, I think we want to support our local retailers, but if you can't find it, it's fair to look somewhere else. And uh, John would know more, John A. But I have bought stuff from Trailhead Paddle Shack in Ottawa, uh, from um, La Corde in Montreal. Uh, there are a variety of stores across Canada. And if you're paying more than $50, there's usually no shipping charge. If they're carrying the same article and you need it and, and it's appropriately priced, then that's worth a look. Okay, and Rhonda offers that Valhalla and Nanaimo will give you a 10% discount if you're in a paddling club, which we all are. Oh. I think John wants to say something. He's got his hand up. Yeah, uh, as far as shopping online, I bought stuff from Aquabat aquabatics in Calgary and of course level six does a lot of mail order business from Ottawa as well so those would be two two other places to put on your list yeah, yeah I just noticed uh, that Elizabeth said if you have high boots or you know non-tight fitting boots if you're swimming they will fill with water so something to bear in mind if you're if you're just keeping below the level of the top of your <laughs> you know, kind of like a, a, a less tight boot, fine. But once you're over the top, it, it will be full of water and probably colder than if you didn't have them on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Elizabeth rescued Heather quite a, over a year ago and uh, Heather's boots did come off. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, just another detail on the Valhalla. Uh, they, uh, they will, you can order on the provincial Valhalla website sometimes if Nanaimo doesn't have it, they have it in their central warehouse. Also, they, Vahala will give free delivery for anything over $29. Oh, wow. And if it doesn't fit and you want to return it or something, you can take it, even though you've purchased it through Valhalla Nanaimo or Valhalla Central, you can take it to Valhalla Victoria to get a full refund. Nice. And, and also Sam in Cabra Bay, um, she promotes paddling on paddle boards, but she has all sorts of gloves and um, wetsuit stuff and other things that, and she'll order stuff in. She's great. I'd highly recommend her somewhere to go. Cabra Bay Paddle Shop. Yeah, Cabra Bay Paddle Shop. Yes. Okay, so we covered most of the ones that I see are listed in the chat there, Lisa, or? Uh, yeah, um, Edmund says some paddling organizations, uh, PC, I'm guessing he means Paddle Canada and CKC have significant gear discounts. And Val says Kokatat makes a lightweight dry suit, tropos material, and the regular Kokatat dry suits use Gore-Tex Pro, heavier material. The tropos material is good for summer wear. See Norm Smith um, on this version of Kokatat dry suits. Yeah, with the dry suit, um, it's worth noting Kokatat, American manufacturer, uses Gore-Tex fabric and the Gore-Tex company uh, for uh, their the main part of their, I guess, expedition suits. 
Uh, they also have their own fabric they've developed. I think it may be called Hydrus. Do I have that right? Anyway, uh, they have their own. The Gore-Tex is a very well-known brand, and that's the expensive one I, I would suggest. Uh, the one that they developed themselves is some of their lighter duty suits. And uh, Level 6, John's mentioned them. They have their own, they, I think they call it exhaust fabric, uh, which is a you know, transpiring fabric, um, water, watertight, and yet it transpires. So they also, and, and both of these companies have warranties. Uh, John's had experience with level six, uh, so have I, and I've also had experience with Kokatat. You know, there's no perfect suit out there, uh, and they will require, you know, care and attention eventually, repair and replacement, but uh, it's worth looking around and taking a look at all of the options that are out there, and, and maybe some of the people who have different things that you run across and just seeing how it works for them. Alan, did you want to make those links available that you had worked on or do you want to put them in the newsletter or what do you want to do about that? Well, I'm curious to see, I, before the session started, I sent a chat message and if, you, if people can see the chat and they go right to the very beginning of it, you should see three little messages which have attachments. And Zoom told me that uh, you should be able to click on those attachments and you can download them to your own device there. Each of those attachments is a listing of uh, manufacturers or suppliers of one is wetsuits, one's dry suits, and one's tulix. And it has uh, one for the main site and one for the item that, um, you know, they're offering. So hopefully you can see those. Is yeah, I'm, not, I'm not seeing that. I'm only seeing the first message is from Karen at 7.05. Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. yeah, Zoom doesn't uh, store up its chat messages. So if you do a chat and no one's on the call, no one sees that chat. Ah, okay, not good. So you'll have to redo them. So I see them on my chat. And so can I rechat them? Yes, certainly. And how would I do that? I wonder. And if you rechat them, if you copy, just do a copy and re-enter. Copy the text and then re-enter. And just a reminder that if you want to save the whole chat, it's very at the very bottom of the chat, it says file. Beside that, there's a little uh, a little square box with three dots in it. If you click on that, it says save chat. And then you just click on save chat and it's saved. In case you want all that chat. Right. I am, uh, I am trying to do this. Okay, let's see. Uh, wetsuit. That should be the wetsuit one. Maybe it went. Yep. That's there. This should be the dry suit one. Yep. And for the Greenland two looks. Great. So hopefully those links, when you download that, you'll find the links active. Uh, of course they are for me, but I often find that's not the case for other people. So, um, and those would, or you can uh, right click and see what the link looks like perhaps. It takes you to the supplier's main link. That's where it says company. And on the right hand side where it says details should take you to a page that's showing that particular article. Anyway, I, just a way of trying to make it a little easier to hunt around. And I know we've had different comments about uh, varying uh, manufacturers. You know, I've had uh, good and bad experiences, I have to say, with uh, Kokotat, but I think they're still probably considered the top of the line in North America, at least, uh, dry suit manufacturer. Um, I've had very good experience with level six uh, as well so far. And uh, I'm working on Reed uh, Chill Cheater. And I think I mentioned I would pass up China if I were you. I, uh, I, I haven't had such a good experience with that one. So I, I seem to have a, a, a dry suit that's not happening with China. Uh, probably wouldn't have been worth wearing anyway. I do have wetsuits of different kinds. And uh, as David mm -hmm. Maxwell will tell you, they always work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alan's, my iPad did not get your attachments. Really? Anyway, but I'm okay. And uh, 
Lisa's husband, Rob, has replaced a pesky, tight latex gasket, neck gasket with neoprene. Yeah. And I think he's quite happy with it. Yeah. yeah, some people, I think I mentioned, find the latex just, just too tight and it just bothers them. And uh, Rob doesn't plan on going over. In fact, he hardly ever does, so <laughs> works for him. <laughs> So I, I hope that people who had questions feel like they've gotten some helpful information. Um, it was a lot of information and uh, it was wonderfully prepared from my point of view. So thank you so much, Alan, for doing this and for everyone who um, contributed and uh, participated. It, it was great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, it was fun. And we've got a few of the people here, the Deb and John A, um, you know. Jenny. Jenny's here someplace, so thank you. Lot to Thanks, learn. Guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good Zoom session. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, we'll leave. Oh, we're gonna save the chat.